My first question, Brother Green, Elder Edwin Cotto of the Seven Judges Sisters, is very plain, simple, and categorical. Uh, I have noticed in your presentation that you have used church fathers when the church fathers would uh, defend your position. And actually also claim uh, first, before your presentation earlier, that uh, if the church fathers would prove Sunday keeping, it is not the word of God, we would not accept it. My question is, are you making now a double standard uh, judgment? Uh, but it's in photo, in their photo? Yes or no? No. Uh, then explain. No, no, no. I'm not making a double standard. We're very clear. We're using the Bible as the only reference to prove doctrine. But we were clear on our, on our agreement that if we mention church fathers, you can mention Ellen White, you can mention references outside the Bible, that's okay because that can add weight. But I only referenced it to prove uh, that they're not trustworthy, actually. So it's quite the opposite. I referenced it to prove they're not trustworthy and why we shouldn't use them as uh, proof of the Bible. That's why I referenced it. I didn't reference them to prove the Bible, to prove the Sabbath. I reference them to prove why we shouldn't use them to prove the Sabbath. Okay, next question. Uh, and the photo. You mean that you just use that church father to prove that it is unreliable. So, what is it that you have used it to prove Saturday in your PowerPoint presentation when you told us now earlier that it is unreliable? So that means it does not prove anything from your point to prove the church father coping on Saturday Sabbath. Yes or no? Okay, uh, so we have a misunderstanding. I said that we're going to use the Bible to prove the doctrine, I'm going to use the Bible to prove the doctrine of the Seventh-day Sabbath. But we agreed before that if we mention anything outside the scriptures, that's allowed as long as we're not mentioning it to prove our points. I'm not mentioning it to prove that the seventh day is the Sabbath. I'm mentioning it to prove that they're not reliable. We shouldn't use them. I'm, I'm sticking with the agreement. I'm saying don't use the church fathers. Uh, if you use them, that's on you. But they don't prove anything. Only the scriptures can prove the point here. And I think I was okay. on the scriptures. For that uh, plain and very clear admission that even though you quoted uh, Saturday Sabbath among church fathers, it does not prove your case. Now, the next question is very simple, plain again, and very categorical. Let's answer me guys. Now, the topic that we have agreed, the theme, is very clear and simple. Prove or resolve that Saturday Sabbath, Seventh day, Saturday, Saturday, specifically Saturday, is normative for Christians according to the Bible. Now my question is, of all the verses that are put in your presentation, have you presented the word letter by letter, literally, Saturday? Yes or no? Very categorical. Uh, Answer me yes or no, then explain in one minute. Sure, yeah, I know you want me to say no because that's why in the beginning we were struggling with either using the word Saturday or Seventh Day because I know you wanted me to say Saturday because the Bible yeah. doesn't say Saturday. The Bible also doesn't say Sunday. By the way, uh, it doesn't say Sunday anywhere in the Bible that Sunday is the Sabbath. So, uh, I, excuse me, I proved um, that just, huh? just give one, mi one minute, uh, still uh, 20 seconds, so continue. Yeah, the Bible proves that the seventh day, now I was very clear in my presentation, I mentioned seventh day many times throughout every slide. Seventh day Sabbath is normative. That's what I proved. That's what you have to disprove. So next Next question. question. So it, would it be again another clear admission that the word Saturday is not written in the Bible and it does not prove your case that the seventh day Sabbath is really Saturday? Yes or no? Very categorical. Answer yes or no and then explain in one minute. No, no. no. That doesn't prove that. The answer is no. That doesn't prove that at all. You're, you're mixing two things. You're telling me that because it doesn't say Saturday, therefore it doesn't say seventh day. That's not true. Just because it doesn't say Saturday, it doesn't mean there isn't a seventh day. There is a seventh day. The word Saturday came in later. That's a, that, that's, that, the Bible doesn't mention the word Saturday, nor does it mention the word Sunday, nor does it mention the word Tuesday or, or, or Friday, but it mentions seventh day. And that's what I was proving, seventh day Sabbath people. Okay, next question, Elder Coco. Since you admit that uh, you have not proved on Saturday because it is not found letter by letter in the Bible. Five now, minutes. 
what does mean yes or no very categorical claim and categorical question that you have not proven the case of that word Saturday specific day in the calendar in the week because we're talking about a specific Sabbath day you have not proven any presentation that Saturday is the seventh day Sabbath of the Christians yes or no well, uh, I wasn't seeking to prove Saturday with that term that you want me to use. I was seeking to prove seventh day. Now, I understand why you want to stick to that term Saturday because you think that's going to help your case. But I think everybody who's listening is well aware that when we say Saturday, we mean seventh day Sabbath. Everybody knows that. Right? If you want to stick to the term, the technical term Saturday, that's fine. But I think everybody is well aware that what we say Saturday, we mean seventh day. We're not talking about Saturday. I'm not trying to prove the term Saturday. I'm trying to prove the word seventh day Sabbath, which lands on what we call Saturday, actually sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. But we're talking about the seventh day, and that's what I was proving. I think I made my, I proved it pretty well. My next question is, uh, you both had Isaiah chapter 6, verse 22 to 23. To prove that there is a Sabbath in the heavens and the earth, that is very clear in your presentation. My very plain, simple, and categorical question uh, and their photo of the Seventh Adventist Church. That, do you know that in the Revelation chapter 22, verse 4 to 6, there is, there is no more day and night in the new heavens and the new earth, according to the scriptures, letter by letter? There is no more day and night, letter by letter. Do you know it, yes or no? Okay. That the, there is no the text says that there will be a monthly gathering right and so if this says monthly then we know that there is the there is time there now i don't presume to understand completely the time that's going to be there because i'm not there yet and i want to get there and I'm, i want you to be there but the bible says right there in that chapter chapter 22 the one you're talking about that there is monthly gatherings there. There is a monthly change. It says here in Revelation chapter 22, verse 2, in the middle of the street, oops, it says, each tree yielding its fruit every month. And so there will be a uh, time there. There will be days there because how else do you read a month unless you have days? Okay, next question. Next question. You have read verse 2, but let me read verse 4, and I would like to unfold my premise on this particular verse before I ask my question. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 5, it literally reads in this version or any Catholic and Protestant Bible, reads and says, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord that giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Isn't it very clear, Elder Koto, that Revelation 22, the bank there, means there is no day and night? Literally? In the King James and all Catholic and Protestant Bible, no. even though much is said in Revelation chapter 22, verse 2, yet in verse 5, it is clear that the month there is not qualified by any particular day or night, according to verse 5, letter by letter, yes or no. If answer me yes or no categorically, and okay. then so, so, no, you, you're misunderstanding here. Just because it says there's no night there, doesn't mean there aren't going to be days there. For example, verse five, verse 25 in that same chapter, cha uh, chapter 21, excuse me, verse 25 says, its gates shall not be shut all by day. That's what it says in verse 25 uh, of chapter 21. So there will be days there. So just because it says there's no need of the sun or need of the moon, that's the word that's used there, need. Just because it says there won't be need there and there will be no, no night there doesn't mean there won't be days there. If you put yourself in the room for two weeks and it's dark for two weeks in that room, that doesn't mean the days stop. It just means it's dark all the time. And so Jesus's light will shine all the time. You won't see the night there, but that doesn't mean that the earth won't be round, that it won't keep rotating, and that the days will not keep taking place. Next question on the photo. Let's go here deeper next, in this chapter. Next question, and that will be the last question. Okay, the last question in Revelation chapter 22, verse 6, a showdown question. The word there means the literal new heavens and the new earth. The word there. Not only your explanation in a room, then outside the room, is, there is a day. Here, the there, here, the word here, there in verse, verse 6 and verse 5, does it not refer, yes or no, to the new heavens and the new earth? The whole new heavens and the earth? Yes or no? I apologize. Uh, Mr. Moderator, can he repeat that question? 
you do have a strong accent, so I want to understand very clearly what you're asking. Yes, uh, please. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, please repeat it just to... Uh, um, anyway, this is the last question. Go ahead and repeat it, uh, please, uh, Bro Alvin. Okay, you repeat it. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 5 and 6, the word there refers to the place that in it referred literally to the whole new heavens and the new earth. There is no more night there. There is no more light or day there. There, there refers yes or no to the new heavens and the earth or no. Yes or no, then okay. explain. So, no. Right, uh, the, uh -huh. right, the, uh, the question is about the, the day there, the there, the word there, there uh, refers to, if it refers to the whole, uh, the whole... Uh, Universe or the, the yeah. whole uh, place the, does it refer there uh, the whole place or the specific place there? Okay, that refers to the new Jerusalem on the earth made new not the whole universe the new Jerusalem chapter 21 mentions the whole uh, Mentions the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven on the new earth And then it mentions in verse 1 of 22 and he showed me a pure river of water of life It's talking about a river on the new earth. There's a tree there as well a tree of life as you keep reading, that tree of life is a healing for the nations. And then it goes down the context, very clearly mentioning the context is the new earth uh, and, uh, and Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. All right. And, it, and it's on the earth. The earth is round, brother. And so it'll keep rotating. There's no indication it won't. Therefore, the sun will be in its place unless it's changed. We don't know. We'll find out then. But as far as we know, unless the Bible's clear, it'll still rotate. There'll still be night and day, but it won't be night on the earth because we will have the light of the of the son of god who will be amongst us at that time and so that's why there won't be no night there because he'll be there with us but nevertheless uh um it's talking about the new earth and it does mention days of the new earth. Somebody first? all right thank you I'm awake. 10 minutes for cross-examination your time starts when you uh, start to speak Okay, thank you very much uh, for your presentation, Brother Alvin. Uh, you use the typical tactic that anti sabbatarians use by um, overwhelming, trying to overwhelm your appointment with uh, opponent with many uh, verses taken completely out of context. And I look forward to talking about that in a, in a, in a little bit after our cross-examination. So I wanna ask you some questions about the ones you mentioned here. Uh, first question is, you said that when we Adventists read Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 5, we insert the word Saturday. Yes or no? Aren't you inserting the word Sunday in there? Yes, but the, the point of contention today, Elder Poto, is that you have to prove on your side as a affirmative. Saturday Sabbath is binding for Christians. So it is not still my time to prove my point on Sunday observance. Okay. So you see? Yes. You have that, to prove it, but you have to prove it. That, that's okay, I have proven it. But I, I'm glad you admitted that you're adding to the word of God, which the Bible uh, says not to do it, not to do that. Uh, the next thing is, uh, in uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church 2175, where does it say that the observance of Sunday replaces that of the Sabbath, the Seventh-day Sabbath? The Catechism says that it replaces, it uses that word, it replaces. Where in the Bible does it say word for word, that the seventh day sabbath has been replaced that's the word with the first day of the week where does it say that yes i can give you a verse that very clearly says that the Saturday sabbath of the jews which is your sabbath now is being replaced by another day if you have read this i will read it to you letter by letter that it is replaced by another day now hebrews chapter 4 verse 7 to 9 is it's very clear i will read again God limited a certain day, saying David to this day after so long a time as he said, Today, if you will lose one, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus has given them rest, then God would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. So meaning, the first day, Sabbath, or the, what I mean is the previous Saturday Sabbath as you play, for the Jews and the Seventh-day Adventist Church, is the place though was spoken of another day. So another day is not another Saturday. This is very clear and implied in the verse. So okay. what the country is, the 2175 is supporting the scripture. One minute is up. Next question.
Okay, we, it should be clear to the audience that Alvin didn't answer the question. I asked, where does it say that Seventh-day Sabbath was replaced by Sunday? The verses that you brought up in Hebrews 4 does not say Sunday or the first day of the week. It says today, but it also doesn't say that the seventh day was replaced by today. The contrast was between the day of temptation in the wilderness and the day of today. Not between the seventh day and the day of today. That's the context, and that's the contrast. I'm going to answer that question. I asked you where, and I'm going to ask you again. This will be my question again. Where does it say in the Bible that Sunday, the first day of the week, has been replaced, uh, excuse me, seventh day of the week was replaced by Sunday, the first day of the week? Can you see Sunday in Hebrews chapter 4? Mr. Roberto, before I answer, I would like to, to make it clear that we have already agreed that the question would not exceed uh, 15 seconds. And I think the uh, question of uh, Elder Coco already exceeded that. So I would like to take it now, Mr. Moderator, for 20, day. Uh, 20 seconds is the time to ask questions. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. So now oh, I will answer. Time right now is 6 minutes and 28 seconds for the cross examination. So you will now uh, rob it to uh, answer the question. Okay. Go ahead. I will answer again in context in verse 4. Then God spake a certain place of the seventh day, which according to Elder Coco is Saturday Sabbath, seventh day, it is clear. Oh, very clear, verse 4, the seventh day is Saturday Sabbath, according to the seventh day, this. Now in verse 8, it is very clear that God would not have afterwards have spoken of another day. What is another day? Saturday, I think it's another day for another Saturday. <laughs> A laughable, uh, very laughable. Uh, reply is that is our uh, affirmative answer to such a question that is still Saturday. Saturday, another day for the uh, seventh day is still Saturday. No, it is not another day. But the word of the says another day. It doesn't mean prove to be it is Sunday or another day. As long as it is another day, which negates Saturday, Sabbath, That is okay. very clear from the All right, next question. Uh, I'm glad you said that it, you admitted that it doesn't say Sunday. That was my point of my question. So I'm glad you admitted. And it doesn't say Sunday. I'll talk about that today on the next on the next portion. Uh, next question here for you. You said that, um, let's see here. You said that um, the seventh day is not Saturday. It's uh, It could be any day, right? Or Sunday. All right. So the question for you is, on what day did Je was Jesus crucified? Yes, according to the scriptures, scholars reckon it now, according to the Roman calendar, during the time when the Roman calendar is only present at the time of the Apostles, the Julian calendar, it is fitted on Friday. But that does not mean that it is already uh, according to the law. Because there is no law that says that the day of crucifixion is to be, to be, the our Sabbath. No, so you are beside the point. You are not proving your Sabbath when you quoted Friday. Okay, so you say it's Friday. So here's my next question. On what day was Jesus resurrected? Jesus was resurrected on Sunday, the first day of the week, according to the Jewish calendar, Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 9. Okay. But the Sunday Sabbath, during that time between the Friday preparation and the Sunday resurrection, Christ was still dead. And you cannot, you cannot have the Lord of the Sabbath dead, dead on his tomb. So that is the difference. You have to worship him when he is already alive. The resurrection is a better day to celebrate the Sabbath and to worship God, the Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus, Matthew 12, rather than Saturday. He is not the Lord of the dead, but the Lord of the living. Okay, there's no verse that says that uh, because he's dead, uh, therefore it's no longer the seventh day. So here's my next question. If he was resurrected on the first day of the week, like you said, what day is the day before the first day of the week? Yes, the day before the first day of the week is no other than the Sabbath day. But the Sabbath day of the Jews, not of Christians. So even if you are, I will affirm as a Catholic that it is Saturday, but it does not prove your case in the topo, because Saturday only proves that Jane is Sabbath, not a Christian. You have to prove that it is the Christian Sabbath that is Saturday. But there is no such scriptures that the apostles will not even Christ. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that, what, who the Sabbath is really for. But my question is very specific. If he resurrected on the first day of the week, you just said that the day before was the seventh day Sabbath. You said that. Yeah. That, means, yeah. that means that the Sabbath is the seventh day 
the day before the resurrection and the day after the uh, the crucifixion of Christ. Do you not see that that lands on what we call Saturday today? Yes, by accident, according to the Roman calendar which you have created, I we also affirm as Catholic. No problem with that. But the point is, it is only for the Jews the Saturday Sabbath. It's for the Jews, and your proposition is true for the Christians. No, the Christians did not keep the Saturday Sabbath after the resurrection. You cannot prove it. Okay. That of respect to the day of rest, the Saturday Sabbath, you have not any quotation from the Scripture. It is a commandment yeah. from the Seventh Day Church. Okay, I'm glad you prove. I'm glad you admitted that the seventh day is the Sabbath. I hope everybody heard that. And you admitted that the seventh day is Sabbath. That's another issue that I'm going to get to in my next question. No, you must think that. Is, 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 is my question now? If you're saying that the Sabbath was only to the, for the Jews, why did Jesus say the Sabbath was made for a man in Mark two twenty seven? Very clear, because. Jesus refers to the essence of the Sabbath law that there is still a day of rest for the people of God but only he was attacking the Jewish hypocrisy of the temporalities and the accidents which they impose on the essence of the law the exchange that is what's happening to the Sabbath Adventist Church they exchange the essence of the law to the Saturday, the day of the calendar they impose on dogmatism and experience of the rest which is never the word of God it is in vain, Matthew chapter 15 verse 9 and therefore, oh, it is only the invention of man of Southern Adventist Church that Saturday, the day of the solar calendar Saturday, is dogmatized and institutionalized by the Southern Adventist Church and the Jews. It is not the word of God. It is worshipping in vain, teaching for darkness the commandments of man, Matthew chapter 15, verse 89. And the solar and the purpose of Southern Adventist Okay, um, let me ask you this. When Jesus said the word Sabbath in Matthew, Matthew and Mark 2 27, was he referring to the seventh day? In that text? Yes, he was particularly referring to that seventh day, but seventh day according to the Jewish calendar and according to the scriptures, which is the first twenty verse eight to eleven, Deuteronomy five, twelve to fifteen, it is the day following the seventh day after six consecutive working days. It is a specific Saturday in the calendar which you dogmatize. So it is open for yes, the And we Catholics will also follow the essence of the law because you have the seventh day, Sunday. In the calendar, it is follow six consecutive working days. But it is not still my time to prove. Next time, you will debate with my brother in the Ramon de Commando on Sunday observance, he will be affirmative, you will be negative. So it does not prove your point and their photo. Only the Sabbath day, not the specific Saturday Sabbath of Sabbath day this year. Let me ask you a question. The Jewish people today, what day are they keeping the seventh day as the Sabbath? Very clear. It is Saturday, Sabbath, because it is funded to them. But it is not commanded to any people. If you read again Psalms chapter 147, verse 19 to 20, Exodus chapter 31, verse 4, 13, and many verses in the Bible, Deuteronomy 5, 1 to 3, etc. It is only for the Jews. And you are now following what is not given to a law as, as you are not a Jew. So in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, Revelation chapter 3, verse 5, there are people not Jews, but pretending to be Jews. We are of the synagogue of Satan. Okay, so you admit, you, you're mentioning a lot of texts that we got to get to, but you admit that uh, that the Jews today are keeping the Sabbath on the seventh day. Will you admit that these are the same Jews during the time when Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man? Irrespective of who it was, irrespective of the, of the debate in regards to whether it was made for Jews or man. That's not my point. The point is, I'm talking about the specific day. We're talking about it is the seventh day or the first day. So my question is, if they're keeping the seventh day today, is it not true that it was the same seventh day, seventh day, when Jesus said the Sabbath was made? That'll be the last question. Okay. Again, I will emphasize my and repeat my reply to uh, Elder Potos' very clear question. Do they choose? Yes, it's Saturday. No question. But the point is. That Saturday in the Roman calendar is only accidental. It is only a temporal choice of the Jews. But it is not normative for Christians. You have not proven your point. If I affirm it is really the Saturday for the Jews, you are a Christian, you are a Jew. And if you, you claim to be a Jew like the Jewish people having Saturday Sabbath, 
Then you are part of the city of Ubsay, and then Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. These people, why not Jews? We're sick on Saturday Sabbath. Belong to the city of Ubsay, and we are not. That we do not belong to the city of Ubsay, and we just were sitting on Saturday Sabbath. Because we have a new day, Hebrews 4, 7 to 9. And it is Sunday, only for catechism, a lot of verses. And the church part. And the photo, I have proven here my point to the gate here. Saturday Sabbath area. All right, that's all. That's all for the first part. Uh, presentation is done, and also the uh, cross examination. Uh, are you ready for the ten minutes cross examination, uh, Mister uh, Affirmative? Yes. yes, sir. Okay, uh, Mister Negative. So you can start now. My first question, Elder Koto. Regarding the validity of the sign of the Old Covenant, to accept that the sign of the Old Covenant, Old Testament, which God made with Israel, was the ceremonial observance of the Sabbath based on the Army 5, God to sin? Yes or no? Qualify within one minute. I, I accept that it was a sign for Israel at that time, as well as Jesus himself was a sign for Israel, according to Isaiah chapter 8. What I don't accept is that that's supposed to prove that the Sabbath was no longer, uh, could not be partaken of by the Gentiles either. That's what I don't accept. Because if that kind of reasoning is going to be used against the Sabbath, it can be used against Jesus. Because Jesus also was a sign between God and Israel. Jesus himself, according to Isaiah chapter 8, you compare that's talking about Jesus in, he, in the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Okay, we're not talking about Jesus here. We are specific about a certain uh, topic, which is the Sabbath. Now, my next question, Malutoto, is this. Since you affirm with a yes, a big yes, that yes, it is the sign of the Old Covenant, the Sabbath. When the Old Covenant was abolished, my next question is very clear and simple. A statement in Hebrews 8.13, letter by letter. Was the sign representing the Old Covenant or the Old Testament also abolished? Yes or no? Categorical? Answer yes or no before you qualify within one minute. The answer is the answer is no, because uh, the the Sabbath can continue to be assigned under the new covenant because there is no text that says that the Sabbath is no longer assigned. Can you find a text that says the Sabbath is no longer a sign? Word for word, you can't. Now we have the sign of the Holy Spirit and of the Sabbath because there hasn't been a change. If you have a the sign of your marriage, I don't know if you're married, but if you have the sign of your marriage, your wedding ring and your covenant with your wife ends, that same sign can be used for a new covenant with another marriage. So it doesn't change anything in respect to the wedding ring any more than it changed anything in respect to the day. Unless you use a different wedding ring, and unless you replace the day with Sunday, and there is no text that says that Sunday is replaced. That's how it's been replaced by Sunday. Okay, excuse me, then my next question would be, since you answered in the negative no, the sign is not uh, abolished, although the covenant is abolished. My third question is very clear and again categorical. So the answer is yes or no. So do you mean, Elder Potter, that the sign continues even when the thing it signifies is already obsolete and abolished? The covenant is, is already stopped and then the sign of the covenant, the Sabbath, still continues? Yes or no? This answer yes or no categorically and qualify within one minute. Yeah, the answer is, is yes, the sign continues because there is not one verse that says that is no longer a sign. Just because you have a covenant and the Sabbath was a sign doesn't mean that after the covenant, the old covenant ends, the sign ends. The same way that the, uh, that the, the sign of your wedding ring doesn't end, doesn't, doesn't cease to exist. It's still a wedding ring. It's no longer representing your old marriage, though. Now it's used to represent the new marriage. It's very clear. And so just because the old covenant ended doesn't necessarily mean that the Sabbath ended, nor that the Sabbath was no longer a sign. The, God, the Bible says that we are Jews spiritually. And so there is still a sign uh, between us and God. That hasn't changed unless you can find one verse that says that it has. My next question is, which is then more important under the sign which signifies the covenant? Or the covenant signified by the sign, which, which is which? Because it seems to be contradictory when you stated that, yes, it is already abolished, the covenant, but the sign is still there. And then later, 
even when it is already abolished the covenant the fight is still there you you answered in the affirmative now does it mean which is important the sign which signifies the covenant or the covenant signified by the sign which is of the two and the photo okay that's a trap question so yeah. Yeah, that's a trap question. You're trying to trap. That's not, and that's not honest. That's not, that's not uh, how you have a debate. So let me tell you this: there is not one text in the Old or New Testament that says that the Sabbath ceased to exist as a sign. Can you give me a verse that says that the Sabbath ceased to exist as a, as a sign? I know your response is going to be, "Well, I'm asking the questions now." But Jesus answered questions with questions. Because so I'm asking you. Is there a verse that says that the sign, the Sabbath as a sign ceased, that is no longer a sign? Can you point to a verse that says that? Actually, there is also, it is my time for contamination, we are in a public debate. I know, so I know. You, you have no way to ask a question. It is different from the time of life to the photo. So again, and there is also, I would like to feed you the point, which answer me categorically, because you have not answered my question. It is very candid and clear. Which then is more important, the sign which signifies the covenant? Or the covenant signifies the sign, which of the two? Why would you have to choose any of the two? Because it is contradictory. Which of the two, again? The sign which signifies the covenant? Or the covenant signifies the sign, which of the two? Please answer me. The public is making the purpose and their purpose. The, the, the most important thing here is that we find in the Bible what the Bible says is most important. The Bible says that what we have now is a new covenant. And in that new covenant, the Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and in, in, in Hebrews chapter, in Hebrews and also in Jeremiah chapter 31, that it's written in the hearts. There has not been a change in it because there isn't a verse that says there's been a change. And so if there hasn't been a change in the Sabbath as a sign, then therefore it's still a sign. Here you can't find a verse that says there has been changed. So what's important here? is the new covenant you're asking me about the old covenant that's why it's a trap question because i can't say that the old covenant is more important because it's not what's more important here is the new covenant and that there isn't one verse that says that under the new covenant there is a change in regards to the sabbath as a sign between god and his people okay my next question is this you told us in your rebuff of fun very clear i'm listening to you well you said that uh even before Moses, the fathers, the patriarchs, up to the time of uh, Abraham and Adam and Eve, has already uh, sanctified the seventh day according to the Saturday Sabbath. It has already been practiced, the law. Can you prove one verse? Because if you can read literally, letter by letter, before Moses, that any patriarch, even to the time of Adam and Eve in Eden, has sanctified the seventh day, have rested the Sabbath day, seventh day. Letter by letter, I will concede that you win this debate. But if you cannot re read letter by letter, then you also have to concede you lose this debate. This is a showdown question. Do you have a Bible verse? Letter by letter? And the Costco, or you don't have? Please answer honestly if you don't have. Okay, so first of all, that's not, on, that's not the topic right now, but I, I will answer your question. Your question is, can you prove that a patriarch in the Old Testament kept the seventh day Sabbath. Jesus, yes, said, Jesus said in Mark 2, 27, the Sabbath was made for man. Now, when it says made, it refers to the beginning when everything was created. All right? That's what the word made refers pointing to. When it says man, the man there is Adam. Now, if it was made for Adam, what do you think he did with it? He kept it. So if it was made for Adam, then Adam kept the Sabbath. It's very clear. Now, if Adam kept the Sabbath and he lived to almost a thousand years, that means his son watched him keep the Sabbath too. And if his son did the same thing, that means that his son watched him do it too. And God said about Abraham that he would, uh, he would give to his children, uh, he would teach his children about God because he was obedient. And so if these patriarchs were teaching their children by precept and example, it's a no brainer that the Sabbath was in existence from the very beginning. You see it from Adam, all the way to uh, to uh, to when the Israelites were ended up in Egypt. I know my minutes is up. I'll keep answering that question if you want to follow up. Okay, so let's, now, uh, let's one let's minute. Question. Last question, okay. Elder Koto, I will push through with the question which you have not answered. Now, you would admit that there is no 
single verse from the time of Moses in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5 to the time of Genesis, as you claimed earlier in your rebuttal. Now, you would affirm that there is no single particular verse, literally, letter by letter, that a single patriarch kept the seventh-day Sabbath, Saturday Sabbath. Yes or no, you would affirm. No, no, no. I, I, will, I will not affirm. I will not affirm that a patriarch did not keep it. Because a patriarch kept the Sabbath according to Jesus himself in Mark 2.27. That means Adam kept it. The Greek text in Mark 2.27 has a definite article. It says the. The man kept the Sabbath. In, in the book of Matthew, I believe it's chapter 13 or 15, or 15, I believe. Jesus also refers to the beginning when talking about marriage. Every time he points to the beginning, he's talking about the foundation. Both marriage and the Sabbath existed back then. And so we have Adam keeping the Sabbath. Now, Adam was a representative of all of mankind, according to Acts chapter 17. So Adam kept the Sabbath from the very beginning, him and his wife, of course. And that's, that's the proof that you're asking for. You want to know which patriarch kept it? That's the one who kept it, my brother. And you can see them from the very beginning uh, as examples and precepts. Now, it says that, that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. The Bible says that all thy commandments are righteousness. If Noah preached the commandments, righteousness, then you know he kept them as well. So there's plenty of evidence that the patriarchs were observing. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 26 that, uh, that Abraham kept the commandments as well and statutes and ordinances. So they were, all, ten seconds. they were all obedient to God's commandments and specifically about the Sabbath, which you're asking, Mark 2, 27. That's the verse right there that no anti sabbatarian can get away from. They wish it didn't exist because that's the one that proved that it existed from the very beginning. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Edwin, uh, coming from the affirmative side. The question is, why does it call the first day of the, why does it call the first, second, and third day? Why is God using the word day if it wasn't days? Very good question. I will answer you directly. Because it is only a uh, motive of Moses during the time to to signify a uh, one week but it's not literal according to Moses he can just do it seven days but not really literal why? because in Genesis 2 4 he also will make the use the Hebrew Aramaic word yom meaning all of seven days is only considered also with God one day and that is true with 2 Peter 3 8 that to God one day to man is like a thousand years or a of years and the aeon of years of one thousand years 2 Peter 3 8 is only 1,000 years to God. So that is the, the contention of the scriptures. It is the word of God, not the interpretation of the seventh Adventist church. It is not a literal day. You cannot push it. Because of that point that only Moses made that uh, motive so that uh, he can explain to the Jews in the mindset of man because they are already existent. They are already counting the Sabbath from the six consecutive rest, uh, working days to the seventh day, which is Sabbath. But it is literal with God in Genesis 2, 1, 2, 3. Because of that simple uh, point in Genesis 1, 14 to 19, there is not yet the sun created only the fourth day. It's very really clear in the whole time of creation, seven days, Genesis 2, 4, Yom, is only one day according to Moses even, Genesis 2, 4, letter by letter. So 2 Peter 3, 8 and Psalms chapter 90, verse 10, proves that one day to God is many years, a thousand years, according to the Bible. Okay, so you're mixing you're mixing a couple of things here because they can be used in various different ways. I'm going to ask you a question in a moment, but days can be used in various different ways. But just because days can be used in various different ways doesn't mean that every day is a thousand years. That's borderline athe uh, uh, atheism. People who attack the Genesis account. The, the the question is this: If the first six days, the first six days, the first seven days were not literal twenty-four days, why is it? that the first, second, and third, which is the one you're contending, say that each one was an evening and a morning? Yes, again, I have already answered you this question. It is only based on the Decalogue when Moses went on the Sabbath of the week, now in the time of Moses and the life of Israel. It is a, a way of, of, of saying, because it, there is already a week in the time of Moses that is part of the earthly, temporal, accidental, portion of the, of the Sabbath law because God said you have to work six days so in the seventh day you have to rest that is the Sabbath that is the Sabbath in Aramaic and Hebrew Sabbath so after the first Sabbath they, they counted six days 
So that is the motive, that is the model which Genesis uh, 1 and uh, chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 Moses also used in Genesis. But what does that mean? 24 hours in Genesis. It is only a way of explaining according to the Jewish life of Moses and the Jews and the people of God. But that does not mean that the 24 hour days when God created heavens and earth because we own there, Genesis 2 4, God created the whole universe in that day, that single day, that is singular in, in Hebrew and Aramaic, that is singular in the plural. This is the seven days. Yeah, you're mixing. <laughs> You're mixing the various meanings of day here to, to suit what you want it to mean in the Genesis account. Uh, let, me ask, let me ask you this. If, the, if, if Moses told them to keep the seventh day, the six days working and seven day resting as a pattern to the beginning when God created everything in six days and rested the seven, why is it then that uh, the Israelites were not keeping 7,000 years? Why are they keeping 24-hour periods if the, uh, the Exodus 20 account is modeled after the Genesis 1 account? Follow the Genesis it does not follow. Because Moses began the Decalogue in the time when he codified the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, in Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5, based again on the Jewish life of Moses, that in reckoning the Sabbath, the rest day, the Sabbath, you only count six consecutive working days, and the seventh is the Sabbath or the rest day. From that, Moses patterned from that seven days, but that is not literal. When he patterned the seven days, that is not literal in the Genesis account. Only the pattern is copied, but the literal 24 hours, Moses did not say that. Why? Because Moses meant it is not literal 24 hours, because it was only on the fourth day that the sun and the moon was created. So how can you reckon the first, second, and third day as 24 hour period when the sun is absent? It is very clear. Uh, and the total, we cannot push it and, well, either, and either, flatter. Either way, the first three days still say yeah. evening and morning. It limits those, those days to evening and morning. So it's still 24 hour periods because it says evening oh. and morning. You, still, still that, you don't want it to say that. You don't want it to say that. But it says evening and morning. That makes it 24 hours the same way evening and morning on the sixth day and the fifth day was 24 hours. Even if you're right about what you're saying, the the month, the month, sun, moon, and stars were created on day four. So you still have time. You still have time. You still have time for the seventh day to be reckoned as a 24 hour period. Now, let me ask you this. You wanted another question. Why did you take, here's another question. Why did you take Hosea 2.11 out of context when it's not talking about the the uh, the seventh day being abolished? It's talking about the Sabbath being ceased for the uh, northern kingdom. Can, uh, was it true or not that the southern kingdom, Israel, uh, uh, excuse me, Judea, were still keeping the Sabbath? True or false? Actually, as they both this is a prophecy, this is not only on the present time on the northern kingdom when Isaiah was prophet at this time. This is prophet Isaiah is also looking forward in the future that the Sabbath of God shall be changed in the context of every prophet that tells that there will be a change of the Sabbath. For example, in context with Lamentations chapter 2 verse 6, that the Sabbath will be forgotten in Zion. That will be also another prophecy. In last two minutes uh, for Mr. Toto. That speaks of not on the day that I saved you from Egypt. So it's not totally Sabbath anymore because it is not means in the negative. So in Hosea, as a prophet, says in Israel, Hosea 2.11, letter by letter, that your Sabbath shall see in context with all the prophets, and it shall be done, and it shall be forbid. Otherwise, not only Hosea will be a liar, that will also be a liar. So do not limit the context of the verse. It covers the Saturday Sabbath from the time of Hosea and from the time of Christ when it is fulfilled by Christ, the loss of the prophets. Okay, so it doesn't parallel, there's no parallel between Hosea 2.11 and the time of Christ. Because during the time of Christ, there was no national destruction of Israel the way it was in the time of Hosea. If anything, it parallels the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, if there is a parallel. Well, that's that is the last question, because okay, so we have only one minute left. The question is, if, if, if that's true, that that is prophesying that the Sabbath would be abolished in Hosea 2.11, is it all, does that mean that marriage would be abolished when marriage would cease, when Babylon would come and destroy 
uh, Judea, according to Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 34. Same words used, cease, mirth, and then it mentions marriage instead of Sabbath. So does that mean that marriage would cease? I will tell you directly, Elder Poto, the position of the Roman Catholic Church. Yes, because we do not recognize any more the marriages of Israel. Because the Catholic Church is the power, the authority, combatant authority, to solemnize marriages. So it also includes the marriages of the Jews. Another, another non-Christian, non-Catholic religion. So, so you also with the so marriage doesn't exist. You're saying marriage came to an end. No, I did not say that. I said that the Just Catholic Church yeah. is the one recognized by the Catholic Church. That is our son in the CCC. We do not uh, oh, yeah. recognize right. marriage. Time's up. The uh, we, can, we, can, we, we may not proceed to proceed to um, conclusion, right? Conclusion, summary. Ten yeah, minutes. Okay, yeah, okay. Ten minutes conclusion. Uh, who's gonna be the first, Mr. Koto? Uh, are you ready for the conclusion? Ten minutes. Sure. Okay, Mr. Koto. So, anytime when you're ready. Okay. So, this debate from the very beginning was this. The resolve was resolved that Saturday Sabbath is still normative for Christians according to the Bible. When I gave my presentation, I, I referenced many verses. Alvin is in the negative. He was supposed to take those verses and respond to those verses, and he didn't. He maybe took one in, the, in regards to uh, uh, Pentecost. So he didn't really refute what I had to say or my presentation. I want everybody who's listening to remember that. He didn't refute the verses that I brought up. He went off on Genesis chapter 2, Deuteronomy chapter 5, the sign, meet Jeremiah, Hosea 2.11. He went off on so many things, but did not refute the points that I made in regards to my first presentation. I was very clear that the seventh day which lands on Saturday, and we all know that, we're all adults here, we all know that that lands on Saturday, that the seventh day was normative for Jesus, for his disciples and apostles, according to the commandment, Luke chapter 23, for the, for the disciples and new Christian converts, Gentile converts in the book of Acts, all the way up to the new earth. He didn't answer any of those, refute any of that, and he didn't answer any of those questions. He went off on something else, and it seems to me that's the tactic that people use against uh, Sabbatarians to go off on a million other things, but not zero in on the topic at hand. A couple of things that he spoke about, the new covenant, asking me a trap question to choose between the sign and the old covenant, but he didn't ask me to choose between the sign and the new covenant. And so, when we're having a debate, we're supposed to be professional, and we're supposed to ask questions that are honest, not try to trap our pe uh, the people we're, we're debating. We're not here to embarrass people. We're here to have an intellectual discussion. All right? When you ask me a question like that, you put me in a position where I have to choose one of the other, which I'm not saying. Now, had you said the new covenant, I would say that the new covenant is the more important because it contains the seventh day Sabbath in it. Because in Jeremiah chapter 31, it says, and you ripped it out of context, but in Jeremiah chapter 31, it says that the new covenant will be written in the heart. And verse 33 tells us, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. I will put my law. Now, the Bible says in Deuteronomy that the old covenant was the Ten Commandments. So if the new covenant says that he will put my law in the heart, that means he's putting the Ten Commandments in the heart. And the Ten Commandments includes the fourth commandment, the seventh day Sabbath, not the first day of the week. So even though it says, not according to the covenant which I made with them back then, that's talking about the contract, the covenant, when they said, all that the Lord has said we will do. That's the covenant right there. But additional to that covenant was also the Ten Commandments. So if you read the text carefully, it's saying that the contract, the covenant, that they would do what God said is not going to be like that anymore. Because under the new covenant now, God does the work. God places the law in the heart. The law is still there in the new covenant because it says it right there in verse 33 of Jeremiah 31. Though change has taken place in the law, it's still the same law, but now the difference is in a different location, it's a different ministration, and it's a different person doing the work. Whereas back then, the people tried to do the work and failed miserably. Nowadays, God does the work. 
It says he will write the law on the table of the heart. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul himself tells us that he's talking about the law that was on the table of stone. So we're talking about the Ten Commandments. And he says that that was placed in the heart of the Corinthians. That's why he calls them living epistles. They are living the law. They don't need to look at a set of rules anymore because they have Jesus in the heart. And when you have Christ in your heart, you do what he tells you to do. And so what is the new covenant? The new covenant is having an agreement where God does the work in you and through you. The life of Jesus is in us. And that work that he does is manifested through us. To go out and say now that the law has been abolished or changed is to nullify that whole thing. What law is he talking about? Jesus said to love your neighbor as yourself, to love God with all your heart. But Paul said in Romans 13 that that uh, that the, the Ten Commandments is, a, is summarized in the law of love. So when you have the law in your heart, you are living the law of Christ. You are living the Decalogue. Now, uh, you took Hosea. Uh, out of context you said that that's a prophecy of the of the of the cross where jesus would die that is there's no parallel you can't just insert and say that's a prophecy of the cross when the Sabbath would end because number one in the context it's it's a prophecy but it's about the prophecy of assyria when they would come and conquer the northern kingdom and the Sabbath would cease for them while it was still existing as an institution to the southern kingdom that's number one number two if there even is a parallel in the New Testament, it would parallel the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD because you see a clear parallel there. And so it would be 40 years after the crucifixion, actually, because in, 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 in 70 AD, there was a destruction of Jerusalem that took place, just like in Hosea 2.11, there's a destruction of, this, uh, of the southern, uh, the northern kingdom taking place. There is a deportation that took place uh, in both incidences as well. There is a massacre that takes place in both incidences as well. So even if there was a prophecy about the future, it would not be about the cross. It would be about the destruction of Jerusalem. But when you read that context, it doesn't do away with the seventh day Sabbath. It still exists. Additional to that, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, which you didn't address, said that there's still a day. You To you, that's the first day of the week, but that text doesn't say that. You went to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, I asked you clearly, you didn't answer the question, does that day, that today, mean Sunday or third day of the week? And you couldn't answer that. All you did was try to connect the dots with some text in the Old Testament with this one, with Jeremiah 31 and Hebrews chapter 4. But you can't just connect dots. You got to read it in context. That thing does not say first day of the week. It does not say Sunday. It's very clear when you read the context that it talks about the day of temptation. In the beginning of chapter 3, the day of temptation, the contrast is between the day of temptation and the today. The day of temptation was the bad day. The today is the good day. And the only reason why he brings in the seventh day is to prove, in verse 4, is to prove that that seventh day continues for the people of God. Now, I didn't get a chance to answer, ask Alvin the question if he believes himself to be the people of God. Alvin was very clear, and I proved it in my presentation that the word sabbatismos means Sabbath keeping. And I also proved in my presentation that every Greek literature found out there that mentions that Greek term, sabbatismos, it's in the context of seventh day Sabbath keeping. And I also proved with verse 10 that, that when it says, he who enters into that rest, that spiritual rest, will also cease from his own works the way God did from his. That's the seventh day, not the first day. To him, the seventh day can mean the first day. But we all know that the seventh day is the Sabbath that the Jews keep today. The Sabbath that Jesus was in the ground when he was buried between Friday and Sunday, which he also admitted earlier that that was Saturday Sabbath. His only response, his only response was that that's the Sabbath of the Jews. But that's not a response in respect to what, the, what day it was. What day it was, it was the seventh day Sabbath. In regards to it being the Jews, that's another topic. We could debate that. We could have another debate. I have no problem with that. But that is two minutes after what day. The other thing is, um, it says here, you the Jerusalem Bible, which is your one of your translations in Roman Catholicism, calls it seventh day. It says seventh day very clearly, which agrees with the presentation I gave in regards to Sabbatismos. Uh, and then verse 10 again says that is of the people of God. 
You mentioned Romans chapter 3. Alvin doesn't understand that there's three ways that God reveals his, his will to people. There's the conscience, there's nature, and then there's revelation when he tells them. So I'm not going to say that Gentiles have the Sabbath because they, have, they, didn't, they weren't given it to it by revelation, which is when God spoke to it and wrote it with his finger. But they did have moral laws because they were guilty of that based on their conscience and what nature says. Nevertheless, that doesn't mean the Sabbath didn't exist because they didn't have it. Mark chapter 2 verse 27 says very clearly that the, that the Sabbath was made for the man. The Greek text says the in the definite article, the man. Now, I'll end very quickly with this. There is a psalm in the Old Testament, Psalm 92. Very clearly on that psalm uh, is the only psalm that David wrote in regards to the Sabbath. He's talking about the seventh day Sabbath. And in that psalm, in that same psalm, he says that it is worthy of worshiping God, and I'm paraphrasing, on a daily basis. Brothers and sisters, when you have the seventh day Sabbath, that represents the work that God is doing on a daily basis. Sunday, nowhere in the Bible does it say what God is doing on a daily basis. In other words, Sunday is a man-made tradition that equals to works of the law. Seventh day Sabbath represents resting in God. When you're resting, God will get will do a work for you on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Okay, time's up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cotta, for the affirmative side. So maybe we move on to the negative side for his uh, conclusion, uh, Mr. Alvin Gitamundok. So are you ready, Mr. Alvin? Adventists usually claim this passage to show that the Sabbath is still in effect. That is what is happening in this debate. And the Cotta quotes Mark 27. <coughs> Feel that the Sabbath is still in effect and Christians are obliged to keep it because they claim that Mark 2 27 in saying that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, proves that the Sabbath was not given to Islam alone but to all mankind. Actually, that is a generalization, that is an, an, a false assumption, assumption on Tobata and a fallacy of Nancy Tito. They are taking the verse out of context, which is you are, you are taking the verse out of context. If one goes back and read the entire passage along with the verse 27, one says that Jesus was not speaking about whether or not the Sabbath was made for the Jews or for all mankind, for all ages and all places. That was not a contention with whether it is for the Jews or for all mankind, it is not the, po the point of Jesus. Jesus was accused of breaking the law in many places in the Bible, and the Sabbath was one day open tick in for him. For he is pointing out the purpose of the Sabbath is to serve man. Not a case of man being made to glorify the Sabbath. Now, in the case of the Pharisees, and this is what is happening to the Seventh Adventist brothers of ours, that they exchange the temporal, the accidental part of the Saturday in the a particular solar day in the calendar, they institutionalize it and dogmatize it. That is part of the temporal, the, not the essential part of the, the Sabbath law, which is seven days. The Seventh day is the rest day of the Sabbath. After the six consecutive working days, there is no particular Saturday. And that is what the proposition of the Seventh Adventist Brothers is about to prove. And he has not proven it. He has failed to prove it that Saturday Sabbath is uh, normative for Christians according to the Bible. Now, again, by removing the verse from its context, Mark 2 27, particularly, Sabbath keepers, the Seventh Adventists, turn the meaning around. This is well documented logical policy. All the false dichotomy, the verse out of context is presented as presenting two points. False dichotomy, this is false dichotomy, two points. The one point is Sabbath was made for man, or the Sabbath was made for the Jews. This is not the dichotomy that, that Jesus is meaning made, made here. <laughs> and that only the Seventh Adventist uh, brethren of ours are imposing upon this verse, which is not found in this verse. So this is false dichotomy. The dichotomy between the Sabbath was made for man or the Sabbath was made for the Jews. No such dichotomy in Mark 2, 27. There is no such contrast. Why is not me meaning this when it says this verse? But in context, that actual dichotomy is between the legalist policy perspective that the Sabbath was more important than those keeping it. That is, this is the position of the Seventh Adventist. That Saturday, that particular day in the calendar, in the modern day week Roman calendar, is dogmatized and institutionalized that we have to follow it. If we are not following the Saturday, then we are not Sabbath keepers. Now, for example, Dr. Koto, Saturday is now, we are now celebrating Saturday in America. And then the other side of the earth, 
It is not this totally. So meaning, as I said, that half of mankind or half of that business are not sabak keepers, they are sabak breakers. <laughs> that is the position that you are now exposing for Israelizing and dogmatizing the Saturday Sabbath, which is not in the scriptures. That is the way worship created by Adventists, not in the Bible, not in the words of God. So, as the Papa, I would like to ask your kind indulgence to review this debate with humility and read the Bible and listen well to the words that I have spoken to you because I have also uh, seen you as my brother. You are separated, blessed, as a point of view of the Roman Catholic Church. We do not condemn you as uh, enemies of our church. No, no. The verse is out of context because it is presented again by two points. The first they call for me, the Sabbath was made for man, for the Sabbath was made for the king. But in context, the actual dichotomy is between the legal and Spanish perspective that the Sabbath was more important than those keeping it. And Jesus' perspective, what is his perspective of our Lord the Savior Jesus says, the Lord of the Sabbath, Matthew 12, right? that the Sabbath was made to serve those keeping it. So, so that that is had it around, and that is the wrong interpretation. It is pharisaical. It is what Christ condemns in Matthew 15, 8 to 9. You make the commandments of man, the doctrines of man, the commandments of man. That is not of God, the post tradition of the Seventh Adventist Church. When Jesus said that the Sabbath was made for man, he was not not an OP, negative, contrasting mankind with Judaism. He was contrasting the law with man. That is clear. The law, the essence of the law is contrasted with man. So this is the Catholic position and the Catholic explanation and exegesis of the verse. And that is the right exegesis of the verse. Not contrasting mankind with Judaism. He was contrasting the law with man. What he was saying is that the law was made to serve man, not man being made to keep the law. There is nothing about Jews or Israel at all in this text, which our seventh Adventist brothers force on the verse, which is not intended because of the apostles or the church of Christ founded in Matthew 16, 18, 19. Now, Adventists are reading something into the text that is not there, and by removing a statement from the Old Testament, it's explicit making it say something that doesn't even fit into the actual context at all. The Old Testament is explicit. The Sabbath was made for Israel. Psalm 147 verse 19 to 20. It doesn't need to, to use the word only or in the Greek sola. No, it doesn't need. Because the verse says in Psalm 147, 147 verse 19 to 20, the law, the, the judgment, are given to Jacob and he has put them into alienation. That's it, that's it, only so it's not to any nation. It already excludes any nation. So let us not do violence to the church. Let us be humble. The Catholic Church is serving that by humbly bowing to the word of God literally and without any more further meaning. That is the point of contention because when the Pope was uh, complaining, God Alvin, this, uh, this type of debate, this type of debate that Filipino does, like God Alvin Gita Mondo, a Catholic defender, is that to make tough questions. Actually, Jesus made some questions to the Jews in Matthew chapter 22. When he asked the Jews, Now, would you not consider who Christ is, the Messiah is? When he is the son of David, and at the same time, David called him Lord? Is it not a tough question? And the Pope and all seven Adventist brothers? You cannot make some questions because you are not in the seventh group. But if you are in the seventh group, you can make some questions to the those in error. Matthew 22, 29. You do it, not knowing the scriptures or the power of that. Matthew 22, verse 29. That is very clear. Now, the Catholic position states on this exegesis of the same verse. I will repeat again. This alone proves that the Sabbath was not given to all mankind. Psalm 147, verse 19 to 20. Exodus 31, 12 to 17. Exodus 20, 12 to 13. And many verses in the Bible. That alone proves that the Sabbath was not given to all mankind because Adam, Noah, and Abraham never knew of it or kept it. Because that is a challenge children uh, question to me from a Catholic defender to and the Pope of the Seventh Adventist Church. This is a shoulder for all the world to see. Where does your claim say that before Moses codified the Ten Commandments two minutes. Because, and Deuteronomy 5, any particular father, the patriarch, after the time of Adam, kept the Seventh Sabbath, where is no chapter and verse? You have beaten it. So the position of the Seventh Adventist claiming that the patriarch the 70 Sabbath is not in the Bible, it is only an interpretation 
and false assumption of the 7th and 26th. Now, it is very clear here. In Colossians 2, 14, 16, it is very clear. Let us just read uh, the living New Testament of the living Bible. If Christians really, this is now the final definitive verse. You can also read King James Version or any Catholic and Protestant Version because this also closes the debate. But is, is Saturday, Saturday reason still in force? Is still accepted the Christians according to the Bible? This is the fatal position of the Seventh Adventists because they don't know this verse and they do not know the right of this verse. And this verse in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 to 16, let us read the scriptures. Living in the Senate and living by the position, amplified version, you can also use any. It says, And blotted out the church's proof against you, meaning the Christians. Colossians chapter 2, starting verse 14 to verse 17, the list of these commandments which you had not obeyed. Oh, there is the list of commandments of the Jews which Christians do not obey. What are the list of these commandments Christians that does not now obey, but is not seeing? In this way, God took away Satan's power to accuse you of sin. And God often be displayed to the whole world, Christ triumph at the cross where your sins were all taken away. Verse 16. What are these list of commandments? So don't let anyone criticize you, according to St. Paul. For what you eat, there is no more forbidden foods. What you eat, or what you think, or for not celebrating Jewish holidays, and feasts, or human ceremonies, or Sabbaths. Meaning, letter by letter. Letter by letter. So this is a showdown again. I have, so if this is a boxing uh, match, uh, and the photos be knocked out three hours. Five seconds. Totally not out. For not celebrating Jewish holidays and feasts or human ceremonies or Sabbath. For so these were only temporary rules that ended when Christ came. Okay, time's up, uh, Brother Alvin.